welcome to It's All Good. It's your girl Latavia. And finally, I am back for another episode or no series. Not sure what we're going to call it yet, but welcome to another episode. It has been a while. Life <laughs> has been happening. But as promised, I am back. Um, this will be the first of many episodes to come. Um, and so to kick this new season or return off, I am joined by my lovely mother, Miss V. Hello. Or well, yeah, we'll have you guys call her Miss V. How about that? I won't call her just. I won't just refer to you as mom. Mom is fine. Mom is fine. Mom okay, is fine. well, mom. Since we are sitting here in your lovely oasis room or quiet room, mm -hmm. um, tell me or share with the people. What is what was the inspiration for this room and kind of what are some of the things that you how you use this room? Mm, I've always wanted to feel like I could do I could be someplace and not and just in my mind being in a different area, I could think, okay, so the thought was to the original question, this is my getaway to where I can think, I can visualize. It's like in this room, God gives me visions and it's like dreams come about. And I tried to decorate it so that everything will be positive. Mm -hmm. It would cause me to, or provoke me to wanna just like, just, I can be, where it's it, to sum it up, this room brings relaxation. 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 A time, a scenery of calmness, I have the tropical in one corner. <laughs> I have inspiration in another corner. I have music in another corner. And to help me change the scenery, I just say, Alexa, change the scene, change the music. And it works real well for me. All right. Well, that's great. Yeah. Um, you all can't see it, but yes, on the other side of us are all uh, the greenery. We have the partial green room, all of these plants. Um, and just a lot of different quotes and things on the walls, but it is a very quiet, calming place that I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate and grateful to be able to be in here with her, <laughs> which reminds me, although this is a new year, um, I am going to continue in terms of starting episodes of just taking a moment to acknowledge something that I'm grateful for. And so mom being the first guest of 2021, if you would share with us something that you're grateful, something or someone that you're grateful for. Well, I am truly, I mean, just so grateful, just truly grateful for just being alive today with all the challenges and different turmoils and traumatic events that has happened in 2020 leading up to 2021. I, I'm just grateful to be alive. I mean, truly, <laughs> truly grateful and just Grateful to have you here with me for such a time as this. It's a short time, but I'm grateful, truly grateful. Mm -hmm. So I just say, you know what? I'm just grateful. Well, I am happy that you're grateful. I'm happy. I am grateful for you, for dad, for family. For one, I, I feel like I said it. I was a broken record in 2020, but grateful to be alive, to be employed. Um but I would say overarching right now, my gratitude has been focusing on just kind of having an opportunity to kind of take a pause mm -hmm. and reset, so to speak. Like, mm. that is part of this, uh, why there were no new episodes <laughs> for so long. Um, because I feel like I was just going, going, going. Mm -hmm. And as grateful as I am for employment and for all the different things um, and opportunities that presented themselves last year, it was a lot. And so just this, this, what, I guess we're, we're two months on, mm -hmm. yeah, we're almost through Feb February, but just this opportunity to pause and reset. Mm -hmm. um, and then to be honest, I'm grateful to be able to come back to this. I actually kind of, I did miss mm -hmm. this. Um, so thank you to all of you who have been continuing to listen while there were no new episodes <laughs> so hopefully some of you maybe you discovered it discovered the podcast um during this site or those who just kind of getting a chance to catch up so i just want to add in terms of being grateful i i mean i'm grateful to be alive to say i'm grateful 
Yeah. When I think about last year and all the different challenges that has come about this year, I, I'm just so grateful. And another thing to add about this room, I try to put inspiration quotes up. For instance, when I'm going through a struggle or a challenge, I just, in my mind, I said, you know what? I can dance in this rain. Because most of the time when it's raining, we don't want to be outside. We just like, no, it's raining. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. But when most of my struggles and challenges, I'd be like, okay, that's just another dance in the rain. Because I love dancing anyway. So, she really does. so to be able to dance through my struggles, to dance through my situations, to dance through my challenges, hey, it's all good. And I'm truly grateful. Well, I am happy. And the quote she's referencing, it's, I'll see if I can add a picture, but it says, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's learning to dance in the rain. And I feel like, Considering it's been raining <laughs> almost nonstop here, here, um, and then the snow and ice and just the crazy weather that's been happening this last week or two, mm -hmm. that is a very on time core thing to keep in mind. And it feels like it was constantly raining to an extent in 2020. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, we we are alive to talk about it. We made it through, especially considering all of the lives that have been lost. Mm -hmm. Um, due to the pandemic, even recently with the weather conditions, um, but just being alive to talk about it and to still be able to enjoy it. But earlier you mentioned one of the things with this room or this space is relaxation. Mm -hmm. And given all of the changes <laughs> of 2020, what is something or what are some things that you either stop doing or start as you say started doing to help in terms of finding a way to relax mm -hmm. in the midst of all the chaos that was occurring i was just it was like this room was like a getaway when i started thinking about the lives that was being lost the uh schools being closed unemployment it was just it was just a bit much so I could come in this room and I could just be me. I could lay out in the floor. I could cry. I could dance. I could sing. I could scream. But it was a place of, uh, after I did all that, I had this area to relax. Nobody to bother me. Nobody to disturb me. Nobody to interrupt my mental state. Mm -hmm. Nobody to interrupt my physical state. It was just, this is it. And I could literally come in here and stay for like three or four hours. And it just brings so much peace and tranquility. And I burn my candles. <laughs> I Sometimes I burn a candle depending on the mood I'm in. A different type of candle or just candles in general? Candles with different fragrances. Okay. Yeah. I usually use Yankee or Bath and Body Works. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I like those. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I, I don't have a... I don't have a quiet room yet. Mm -hmm. um, but... I found, I spent a lot of time in my bedroom <laughs> during <laughs> this pandemic and quarantine and working from home. And so I've always enjoyed showers. I think I've talked about that in previous episodes, mm. but just kind of randomly throughout the day or when I'm having those moments of just kind of feeling anxious or just mm. frustrated, I found myself taking, just, just being in the shower, just the water, because like, can't go to the beach <laughs> and pools was that was a whole different kind of experience trying to go to the pool this summer but just being able to be in the shower and just kind of having the water hit me that was another form of release of like okay and bike riding it oddly became a relaxation when it was warm and i want to add back to the part of getting away mm -hmm. somebody may say well i can't afford to have a quiet room or i don't have anywhere to go it doesn't have to literally be another room use your closet yeah a place of escape. I mean, I cannot tell you how important it is to have that place where you can just go and your mind can be free and you don't have to be concerned with the phone ringing. And oh, by the way, I know some of us are attached, attached <laughs> to that cell phone. When you go to that quiet place, leave the phone, leave everything and just be there. It could be a closet. It could be a pantry. <laughs> I mean, it could be your car. It could be yeah, your car. Yeah. But have make it a point, if you haven't already, to have that place where you can get away and just have that time to just think and reflect and 
sometimes being quiet, you can put plans in place that you never thought you could. And you like you, you you can encourage yourself like, wow, I can do this because you've tuned everything else out. Everybody, everything, and it's just God, me, or whomever, we can work this out. So make it a point of having that quiet place in your house. And as Latavia mentioned, if you have to have it in your car, make that your oasis. I mean, if you live if you live with people <laughs> that sometimes you gotta find it. Um going for a walk when mm -mm. that was another thing that I started. I mean, it's been quite cold lately, so walking has not been occurring because my brain just says, No, it's cold, we're not supposed to be outside. So figuring out something to do, stretching yoga, a variety of things. Mm -hmm. um, but as we're talking about finding a space in a, a, in the house or somewhere just to kind of have that quiet time to get away, to relax, um, going to take a quick pause for the cause to share some information from one of our sponsors. But when we come back, I want to talk to you about how you've been managing that in context of working from home as an educator. <laughs> oh because my. that was, I know that was an entirely different type of pivot and transition. So yes, like yes. Said, we're just going to take a quick break here to hear a word from our sponsor and we'll be back shortly. Looking for a luxury full service salon and overall wellness experience? Look no further. At Salon 2911, you'll find services for both natural and relaxed hairstyles, hair loss and scalp disorder treatments, nail enhancements and full body waxing and more. Salon 2911, a one stop shop for your hair, skin and nails. Experience rejuvenation from the inside out. For more information and to book your appointment, visit salon xxix11.com. So now that we are back, the fun can begin. So <laughs> Let the camera roll. I didn't really do much of in terms of details, in terms of an introduction. So if you would tell the people a little bit about what you do. And like I said, just as an educator and working in education, what life has been like in quarantine and the pandemic and working from home. Oh, wow. And all that good stuff. You really want to know? I really want to know. Well, I know a little bit, but I want <laughs> people to know. People, do you really want to know? Okay, let me be stop. Let me stop. You know, I have this quote that I usually tell myself or read every day, accept what is, move on, believe, believe that it will happen. When the pandemic came about and we were, to, I mean, it just happened so sudden. There was no mm -hmm. preparation, no planning, no nothing. Nobody really knew anything. All they knew was, you guys have to get out of the building. So, I'm a school counselor, okay? Mm -hmm. School counselor. So, you know, I have to have a, I need to know what's going on. I, I, I just need to know. I have that spirit of, I need to know what's going on, right? N no, nobody knew anything. They just told us, pack up everything. Make sure you get everything, get out of the building. Everybody was going home. And I was like, what? And then it was like, everything just started to happen. Mm -hmm. Lives are being lost. After what, three or four weeks, it was considered declaring a pandemic. I've never been in education where a pandemic took place. <laughs> Matter of fact, I had to dip, I had to sort of like, what is a pandemic? I was about to say, had you lived through a pandemic before? No, I was like, do I really know what a pandemic is? Right. And I was like, okay, ooh, pandemic. Oh my, this is serious. <laughs> so I'm like, oh wow. And then being a counselor or even being a school teacher, you're in an environment, especially in a public school, where you know the only meal the students get is when they come to school. With what's going on now in the pandemic, they're telling us we have to go home, the students have to go home. And as a caring person and as a counselor, you know, I have this empathy and sympathy towards all of my students. And I'm thinking, how are they going to eat? Where are they going to get a meal from? And then I had to remind myself, V, accept what is. <laughs> accept what is. Let go. Let go. You don't have to be in control of this. Have faith that it will all work out. So I'm thinking, go home. And me being the extrovert that I am, <laughs> I need to be around people. She really does. I need people and to go home and work 
and nobody to talk to, <laughs> being on a computer eight hours a day. Oh no, oh no, my inner spirit, accept what it is, have faith that'll work out. So I said, okay, so pandemic, coming home, working on the computer, day in and day out, everything closed. I, at one moment, I mean, at one point, I thought I was gonna literally just say, I was like, okay, God, I feel like I'm a check out because I had never experienced anything like that. And to, and the other thing is my husband, he was working from home too. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, stop the car, stop the car, stop the car. Both of us can't be at home working on these computers. <laughs> no, we can't do this. So he was working here. I was working here. So I was like, oh no. But anyway, because he is truly a planner. As like you, Latavia. And me, I'm spontaneous. Yes. If I feel like, okay, no, I'm not going to do this right now. I'm going to do it later. So I had to grasp the thought of him, he and I working together. But it wasn't that bad after all. We, was, we managed to work it out. And the challenging part was not seeing the students, not knowing what condition they were in, not knowing, because I know a lot of our students had a lot of, challenges at home abuse a lot of them was homeless they didn't have any kind of a, a way of escape mm -hmm. like i used my quiet room a way of right. escape there's when they came to school that was their way yeah. of escape yeah. so they lost that out a lot yeah and yeah. i I've, I've heard that as well i have friends who are teachers um and so that is something they have shared as well and just that ad adaptation and so what did your school district or your school, what did they do in terms of, you know, that aspect you mentioned that a lot of the students, the only meal they get is mm -hmm. when they come to school. So mm -hmm. did your school district do anything they about came that? Feeding sites. They okay. put feeding sites in place. It took about two weeks. Okay. So our concern was, okay, how are these kids eating these two weeks? But they did put a feeding site in place in different areas. Okay. And they would provide breakfast and lunch. So when the parents came to pick up, that meal for breakfast, their lunch was included. Okay. So that did give them two meals a day All right. and a snack. So that was a good thing. And the other thing was finding to meet their social and emotional needs. There wasn't really a lot you could do because social, social, anywhere. <laughs> social distance, yeah. quarantine, they couldn't go anywhere. So during the time as a counselor, I had to figure out, okay, how can I reach these students? What can I do? Mm -hmm. So we had to literally take Chromebooks to their houses so that they could be meet connected. their academic needs, right? Right. So then the other challenge we had, some yeah. of them didn't have Wi-Fi. Yes. No <laughs> Wi-Fi. So we was like, oh, wow. So then we had to come up with a thank God for the different sponsors who mm -hmm. sponsored hotspots okay. so the students could use them. And then the other challenge was relatives taking the Chromebooks. Oh, wow. So that was another issue. And so me having to check on them. Only thing I can go on is what they're telling me on the phone. Right. And during that time, there were a lot of um, suicidal ideations. There was a lot of sexual abuse going on with our students. Mm -hmm. There was pregnancies taking place. Speaking of pregnancies, now we have, during the pandemic, we, was, we were speculating that there would be some kind of negative things going on. Now we came back in August, we have four girls that are pregnant. And from what we've been told, from my case though, this happened during the pandemic. So it's been it's been challenging, but I managed and trying to come up with ways to reach my students to make sure I was there for them. I set up a separate Google line so that they could call me and I would reach out to them daily in emails and set hours where we could actually talk. Okay. So that worked well. And some things that I did to keep me mentally sane, I walked. Five miles a day. I literally, every day, I would walk five to six miles a day. I remember getting the calls. We did five miles, or today we did six. So, yeah. I mean, it is, I was like, wow. Exercise was like medicine then. It was medicine <laughs> for the mind. I appreciated it, and it helped me, because I'm not a person who likes to walk a lot. I like to do more active things yeah. <laughs> that are vigorous. And but I go places. Yeah, and it, oh wow, that was the other thing. I love to travel, and we couldn't go anywhere. 
So what we would do would ride down to the beach, sit in the car, put our windows down, roll the windows down, and just sit and look at the ocean. So I can say this pandemic experience has taught me that I am a survivor, that I that we can survive. And it's not as I wouldn't say it's an easy thing to do, and I'm not saying it's something that I would want to do again. <laughs> <laughs> right about now, I want to write bye bye COVID, bye bye COVID, and it gave me an opportunity though to get closer to my husband, closer to my family, my daughters, and family members as well because we leaned on each other during this time. Yes, yes, there. I definitely say. I mean, I feel like we were fairly, we were close. Mm -hmm. before but this time has definitely I would say brought us closer in a different way mm -hmm. um, and even when it was when we came out of the quote unquote lockdown mm -hmm. you all here in North Carolina came out of it a lot quicker than we did in Maryland mm -hmm. but we won't get into all of that <laughs> but when I would say when it became a little bit somewhat safer right. or where we were able to move about a bit right the travel that i've done mm -hmm. in this last year has been mm -hmm. coming here to mm -hmm. see you all it's been family because that's really the only and because it's something i can drive here mm -hmm. so i don't have to be you know i limit my exposure to other people and mm -hmm. then when i'm here i'm here mm -hmm. <laughs> as you can attest i i come i stay in the house then when I, you know, before then it would just be go to the grocery store. But I would say I appreciate that. I know that there are a lot of people who have sacrificed yeah. even seeing family for, for, for reasons. And I do understand that. Um, but as you said, in terms of thinking about my mental health and my, mm -hmm. my sanity and just needing to get or have a release or mm -hmm. be able to get away, this, I would say, spending time with family has been that especially mm -hmm. now that we are in what is this is february of 2021 and almost we are a, still in uh, almost a year literally almost a year yes. to when i would say we had i would say i first started hearing about mm -hmm. covid mm -hmm. or i think it was still being called coronavirus yes. at that time um but like around this time last year we were hearing about it but it was oh it was it was in another country. It's not here. Oh, it's been one or two cases, but it's isolated. And then slowly it was, oh no. And then like you said, the shutdown was just so abrupt. Yes. There was no real warning. No it was just, oh, uh, next week we're probably going to be in here and all these speculations. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And then it was, I, I remember it was March 12th mm -hmm. that it was, oh, the announcement went out that schools were going to be closing the following week for at least a week or two until they figured it out mm -hmm. and i remember the next morning i got up ready to go to work and i got an email yeah we're working from home today mm -hmm. okay this is different all right and then from then on i think that next week mm -hmm. schools were closed but we still kind of had that week they were like go get everything you need to right. do because after this is shutting down right and we definitely didn't think at that point at that point thought for certain <laughs> by august <laughs> oh. uh, we'll be good to go yeah. and then august came and went and it was still here and like i said here we are in 2021 and it's still here and so it's become somewhat of the norm now right. you know wearing mask. if you leave the house you make sure you have your keys your wallet your purse your phone your mask your mask and your, your mask. gloves and do you have your, you know hand sanitizer your wipes all of these different things it's just it's become almost like this is life right for the foreseeable future mm -hmm. um and granted yes now there is a vaccine there's you know various opinions and thoughts on that mm -hmm. but i guess with all of that in mind i know that a lot of states or school districts have returned to mm -hmm. school you know in person i know a lot of places i have friends that lived in different places their children they were back in right. school um, when the school year started back in August and then when the cases started spiking the again, closed. they closed, but now a lot of them are returning and I know yeah. for you, uh, March 15th. Oh, it's March 15th? March 15th. But I can't say I appreciate it. I mean, there were a lot of negative things that came out of COVID. However, I can't say I learned to appreciate little things more so than before COVID. 
I can say I grew through in this grew through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. I look at life differently than what I did before the pandemic. Okay. And oh, sidebar. During the thing that I didn't mention during this pandemic, <clears throat> I was like, you know what? There's a lot of negative things coming out of this pandemic. Lives are being lost. <clears throat> Relatives cannot visit each other. And by golly, George, <laughs> while working from home, I was in the office. And do you know, do you know that refrigerators can talk? I found out during the pandemic. Because <laughs> I would walk by that refrigerator and it would call my name. B, <laughs> B, you want to eat this? B, come and eat this. And I'm like, <laughs> and guess what? I surrendered. I am. You answered. I sur I answered. You opened the door. I opened it, and I continued. I continued. During the pandemic, I literally gained ten to twelve pounds. And when the summer came, I was like, Oh no! What did I do? So I was like, Okay. We've had enough negativity out of pandemic. <laughs> pandemic can't, I will not allow this. But the good thing also for me during the pandemic. Do you want some water? The dreams and desires. You some water. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs> the dreams and desires that I've had for years, years. Mm -hmm. that of becoming an entrepreneur or becoming an, involved in the community. It's taking place during the pandemic. And I'm just so grateful. I've talked about all the negative things that mm -hmm. happened during the pandemic, but some positive things happened for me as well. And I'm truly, truly grateful. Yes, you you have definitely started on some things that I'm excited about that will be coming to, I'm sure they'll be coming to fruition throughout the rest of this year mm -hmm. and in the future. So I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy for you, excited for what it will be. You know, I'll be sure to let you all know once these things yep. start falling Can't wait to share. Place. Can't wait to share. Yeah. So she'll be back. Don't wait. <laughs> um, but going back to this whole refrigerator. Oh, Because yeah. I definitely, I was like, um, do we need to have a different conversation? But I did the refrigerator talking was talking to a lot of people. That I remember at the beginning, I was like, oh, I don't want this pandemic 15. And I would say I was almost the reverse. I started off very intentional about I am not going to gain weight in this house. Um, did I in terms of grocery shopping? I kept very little snack things in the beginning. I was cooking, I was walking, exercising just like every day, doing something, and I did great until around like April, May, when it's like, oh, this isn't over yet. <laughs> It's not going away. Mm -hmm. We're still. Oh, this is this is it. Me being at home and only home is mm -hmm. it. And so then, you know, I was like, I'm tired of cooking. I'm tired of doing dishes. I gave in and started ordering from like DoorDash and Uber Eats and, and that's another. No, no, no. Um, because so I'm like, well, then I don't have to go out. Um, I sample. I tried a lot of different wines. Mm -hmm. Um, was drinking a lot more wine and just exercising was here and there. Um, but then, like you said, when the summer came, mm -hmm. being able to go outside and do that, I would say the bike, riding the bike became, bike riding and going on walks became mm -hmm. my social yes, life. That's, it's so important. I can say, enjoy life. With all this that has taken place, with everything that's still taking place, take your time to enjoy your family, love your family, enjoy, learn to love yourself first. Love yourself, enjoy being with yourself. And at this point in my life, I'm still trying to learn to love being by myself. <laughs> that's not a that's that's not a thing she that I really I, does I, that's, not like I, being by herself. I just don't. I just it's just something that I'm I'm learning to. <laughs> I, 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 I'm working on it. You've I'm, gotten a lot better. I'm still a work in progress, but I'm gonna get there. But learn to love your family your friends enjoy them don't take them for granted because you know what who would have ever thought that we'd be in a situation like this but it's all it even though there have been challenges different situations came about it's all working out for our good even when it don't feel like it, it is good yes so I, I am so grateful for that. I appreciate that. And I definitely want that. I feel like if any, if nothing else, 
that would be a very big takeaway from this conversation um but still being positive i want to go back <laughs> to this return to the building that i know you are oh so excited about i am so so excited <laughs> excited because now i'm gonna have to get up at 5 45 in the morning mm -hmm. whereas i haven't been doing that for the last <laughs> year i've been able to sleep until seven do what i need to do then go to the computer and it's i'm excited from from i'm excited for the students right are going to be returning they get that social emotional fulfillment can take place i'm sure it'll be challenging for them to return just like it will be for us right but we have to believe again it's all working out for our good so the returning to the building um i'm gonna have to put on clothes again i hey I, I, I mean it's just some adjustments but uh, oh but with all of that i'm I'm truly excited not for me i forget about me having to make some adjustments <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be some adjustments warming the car doing all those things that i haven't done for almost a year but mm -hmm. seeing I'm those students ready. seeing those students coming back into the building having a place to escape they can make their separation mm -hmm. because right now they're home all day. They've lost motivation. We have over 70% of our students failing. Oh, wow. And even our seniors have gotten to the point where, um, what's the point? What's the point? Because their senior year, this is the year they've been waiting for. Uh -huh. Prom, dance, graduation. So it looks like if the uh, numbers doesn't go back up, the metrics, it looks like our students are going to get that opportunity. I'm not even going to focus on me. Okay. Me having to make the adjustment of going back. But seeing their faces to be able to socialize and connect with their friends again. Okay. Putting it back to a perspective. I mean, it's like right-handed and having to learn to use your left hand. And I'm sure this has been not just a challenge for adults, but probably more of a challenge for the students. Oh, yeah. That is, I can't even... I can't even begin to imagine what this has been like for them. I was um, talking to some some women who were in who were in college now, or they were starting, mm -hmm. and just talking about the different things. It's like, wow! I really do hope that you all are able to get back yeah. on campus and have some of these experiences because they were some of the greatest times of my life. Yes. Um, and even just in school, you know, the things that. I, a lot of us took for granted in terms of just being at school mm -hmm. and there's so many people who lost missed out on that yes. and drive-by celebrations are have become a norm mm -hmm. virtual graduation we we had a jasmine my sister had a virtual graduation mm -hmm. um so it, it it's definitely an adjustment i'm i think it is great that you are focusing on how good of an experience or great it'll be for the students returning. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess with that in mind and the fact that we are still in the midst of this pandemic, uh, what kind of safeguards or precautions, like what are the, what's, what is it going to be like? What are the, is the district, if anything, what are they doing mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone is as safe as possible? Well, for one thing, they ramped up the vaccinations. <laughs> it was like we were told maybe a month ago that we would be vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And it was like this age group, 65, frontline runner, workers, nursing homes and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, Uncle Roy, Roy <laughs> Cooper, Coop Coop says, ah, oh, no, no, no. We got to get those educators in there. So uh, before March 15th, every educator in Cumberland County will be vaccinated and which is started last week and the second thing every teacher is required to wear a mask if you want to work in the district okay. it's not an option all right if you want to work the students will be excuse me will be required to wear a mask mm -hmm. not a shield but a full mask with their nose covered nose and mouth no mask sagging <laughs> that no the mask, mask that is actually no mask a thing, sagging no 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 because I have seen it no. like people really just yeah, be having like, it hanging yeah, like, down around here what's the point I was like <laughs> now you sagging with your mask no they would have that mask on their nose and their mouth 
and there will be social distancing. We're going A day, B day schedule. Okay, so I was going to ask. It's not, that, um, no, it's going to be okay. face to face and virtual. Okay. Two days on, two days off. The third day, there will be san Wednesdays will be the day for sanitizing and getting everything cleaned up and refreshed. For those students that were there in the building on Monday and Tuesday, they will be learning from home on um, Thursday yeah. and Friday. Okay. The ones who were home on Thursday and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Monday and Tuesday will be coming in on Thursday and Friday. Okay, I so, think. Um, and with the way, where some schools can do face to face every day, our school is the second largest in Cumberland County, and we have almost three thousand students. Ooh. So there's no way. Mm -mm, that that we, is a logistical nightmare. There's no way that we could do face to face on a daily basis. And you are at a high school, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. I am at a high school. So. That is, well, I'm happy to hear that. Oh, I'm sorry. And the bus drivers will have shields as well. Okay. And they're going to implement shields for the teacher's desk to the best. That's the plan. They oh, haven't the, been, like that. Yeah, they okay. haven't been, they have done it throughout half of the school, but supposed to be completed by March. the 15th when everybody returns back to the building. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that they, one, made you all I know there's still some questions and leeriness about the vaccine, but if my thought was if we are pushing up, because I have some friends in Maryland as well who are teachers and there, Maryland is also pushing for mm -hmm. students. I think they're starting with like kind of K through six initially or K through five first in terms of phasing it in. But my thought is if you are requiring people to go back into the building, then at the very least, you need to make it so that they are priority for receiving the vaccine and, yeah. you know, doing all of the other precautions. Yeah, uh, because right now, I don't think the vaccines are suitable or safe for children or for people right. under 18. So right. it's like the students, it's so many, there's so, so many variables. Yeah. But like I said, I'm happy to hear that they have, it sounds like, you know, there was actually some thought put into mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. um, as opposed to how things are handled last year but so i'm happy to hear that especially just from a overall standpoint but also because you're my mom and you're about to go back <laughs> into this building with people who we don't know where they go when they leave or what what they've been doing how mm -hmm. they've been spending the pandemic mm -hmm. so it does give me a little extra level of comfort knowing that these precautions have been put in place and that you all have been um moved up in terms of priority for receiving the vaccine most definitely yeah, most definitely. Um, and I, I know it will be an adjustment getting up and having to be out because I'll be honest, since March 13th, 2020 was the last day that I got up, got dressed and to leave and drive somewhere to go to work. Uh, and right now it'll be a minute before I go back to anybody's <laughs> office and I definitely take my time. I still wake up around at least by seven which it's crazy. That's how I knew I had become an adult adult when sleeping till seven or eight was like, oh, I slept in this morning, even on the weekends. But anywho, um, very happy to hear that. And lost my train of thought. <laughs> but yeah, so, okay, so kind of shifting gears. So with this preparing for going back in and having to adjust, mm -hmm what about this going back into the building or kind of coming out of this pandemic what are you looking forward to coming out of the pandemic yes, like when it's safe so one what are you what are you actually looking forward to about going back into the building for school and then two what is one of like what are you looking forward to or the first thing you want to do <laughs> I think I know the answer, but what is the first thing I am looking do? forward to going back into the building to connect with human beings, to yes. be able to converse, to be able to bounce ideas off of each other. Because we do it now, but everything is virtual. Right. And I am so over Zoom. <laughs> I am so over. I'm looking forward to not having to do Zoom anymore. And I know it's it's been beneficial. Yeah. It has worked. And I don't, not being negative, but Zoom has worked, but I'm just ready to talk yeah. to people and be around people and particularly be there for the students so we can see them put our hands on them well you still and, can't really put your hands i mean on not put my hands on <laughs> you them still gotta be so no no i mean yeah i gotta remember but that. i get what you're saying I being able to, to see, see them and uh 
Because like now, I guess I, I, I love or I, I have such a passion for making sure the students are getting what they need. Mm -hmm. I've even asked my husband to tutor one of the students. He knows nothing about the student. The student <laughs> knows nothing about him. So, but anyway, I'm just looking forward to going back in the building, connecting, interacting, making sure they get what they need and preparing them for graduation. And the thing that I'm personally looking forward to mm -hmm. when this pandemic is over, I would love to travel. I want to travel, 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 <laughs> travel, travel. I do. That was coming. So yes, connect with friends that I haven't been able to see in a while, except for virtual. Right. No, I I concur. And, there was and I'm not a friend of the mask. I wear it <laughs> <laughs> because I'm required to. Oh, I know. And I just sometimes I find myself like, okay, I'll just stay home. I gotta wear this mask, but. It's getting better. And yeah, that's the other thing I'm looking forward to, not having to wear that mask. Yeah, but I, I feel like at this point, we will probably be wearing masks at least through the end of this year. Yeah, probably so. Maybe 20. Don't, 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 don't mention it. We'll just say the end of this year. But I wholeheartedly agree with you on the travel piece because there was a couple trips that were canceled <laughs> uh, this past year and even this year mm -hmm. because of, of the pandemic. And... Granted, you can fly, but just kind of like you were saying, the term, I wear the mask because I do want to protect myself, but mm -hmm. I don't, the idea of having to wear it for a flight or for whatever, mm -hmm. I just, and all of the requirements and quarantining things, I just, I'd rather wait. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely looking forward to traveling. Excuse me, the other thing is, I mean, not, I don't want to be selfish, but the other thing that I'm looking forward to when this is over, families can connect again. Grandparents who haven't seen their babies, Parent, I mean, people, I mean, families that just haven't been able to see each other for yeah. a, almost a whole year. So I'm just grateful. I'm just going to be so excited to be able to get to do that as well. Yes, no, yeah, because I, I know some people who have, even, I mean, there's family that I haven't been able mm -hmm. to see, but I also know I have been able, including I'm here with you, I've been able to see my immediate family, but I, I do have friends that because of the pandemic and underlying conditions and just trying to be you know out of the abundance of caution they have not seen their family in person in almost a year um so definitely looking forward to that um but yeah so so many things to kind of think about in terms of how we adapt and we are now moving mm -hmm. in this new reality at least we got a new president um our new administration <laughs> yet to be determined what's going to come of that <laughs> But I do want to thank you for taking some time to, to talk and share your experiences, especially as I'm sort of, I guess, relaunching or re, yeah, relaunching the podcast. Um, My pleasure. Yes, because she's one of the people who have been asking me, did you put a new episode? Is there a new one? When's the new one coming? So now there's a new one coming and you will be <laughs> and a you, part of you it. are a part of it. <laughs> Woohoo! So yeah, so... Yeah. Um, just as been said multiple times as we've talked, um, what did you say? Learn to accept? <laughs> Learn to accept what is. Uh, accept what is. Let go of what was. Accept what is. Let go. Let go. Uh, of what, <laughs> yeah, that's let it. it go. Let it go. Of what let was. Let it go. Yeah, okay, okay. And thirdly, have faith. And what will be okay those three things accept what is accept what is let go of what was let go of what was and have faith and what will be and have faith in what will be and your life will be much much more pleasant all right well you heard it here go ahead and start I'm gonna work on implementing that a bit more in my life you all do the same and in terms of having faith that it will Say the last part again. Have faith that, that it will work out. Have faith mm. that in what will be. Have faith in what will be. Have faith in what will be. And I would say that's a perfect segue into because regardless of what it looks like, feels like, in the end, it is all working out for your good and it all will be good. Um, and so reminder for myself is for everyone listening life is a journey it's a process so we've got to focus on 
enjoying the process that is life and i feel like this pandemic has been a huge mirror and or not mirror but a reminder of those things mm -hmm. so thank you for listening until next time bye bye